Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. This video is a step-by-step -step guide on how to get the secret advancement, how did we get here. In order to get this advancement, you need to have all the status effects available in survival Minecraft at the very same time. This includes levitation from a shulker and mining fatigue from an elder guardian. So you can imagine it is quite the task to achieve in the game. However, in this video, I will show you how to do this with what I think is a method that requires less effort than you might expect. But before we get into the details, let's hop over to some command blocks I've set up and see what effects are actually required. In front of me are 20 command blocks, and these are going to give us the status effects that we need to get this advancement. Now, if we were to take away any one of these, we wouldn't be able to receive this advancement. We need to have all 20 of these applied to us at the same time. Now, if I press L to bring open the advancements tab, we go to the never section, you'll see that we've completed all of them here. And the one that we're getting is actually a hidden one, which will be right in this spot here. Now, in front of it is a furious cocktail. Have every potion effect applied at the same time. If you haven't got that one already, then you're probably going to get this one in the process of doing this, right? But let's press the button. Let's unlock the advancement. There go all of the effects at the top of the screen. And that pop-up lets you know that we've got the advancement. So let's go and check it out. And there it is. How did we get here? Have every effect applied at the same time. So if you're thinking of going for it and doing this advancement, well, I would highly recommend that you watch the video all the way through to the end so you know every step and you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. There is a ton of preparation work here. For example, there are going to be a lot of different potions to brew, which means lots of different ingredients. And you should probably be in the late stage of the game as well. Should have killed the wither and got yourself a beacon and also conquering end dungeons so that you have an elytra wings and rockets will make your life a lot easier as well. So please Please do consider the amount of work that goes into this before you actually attempt it. So we shall start off with the consumables and things like that, the easiest stuff basically. And a lot of these are just potions that you will brew. And there is a lot of information here to take in as well. So you'll probably want to make some notes about what different things you want to brew. Now when it comes to the order that you will consume these in, we will get to that later in the video. And that'll make sense as I start to explain uh, what's going on here. So we have the brewing recipe for fire resistance, nether wart and magma cream and you'll see all of the ingredients as we go along. And what I haven't included is a redstone dust which will take it from three to eight minutes for the default type of potion. But some potions are actually halved or less the amount of time that they last for and that will be mentioned. Now you can also get fire resistance from a notch apple as well. So over here we have the invisibility potion. Then we have Jump Boost over here, which you can also get from a beacon. So if you have a lot of beacons and a lot of iron, it might just be easier to get all of the effects from the beacons there in the area so you don't have to worry about consuming things as you're trying to get all of the effects at once. Then we have Night Vision. Again, this is a potion that can go from three to eight minutes with a redstone dust. Over here, though, we have Poison, and this has a redstone dust because with it, you'll only get one minute and 30 seconds. However, I think it's kind of pointless because you have to consume a puffer fish to do this, and that will give you Poison level four as well. So moving on, we have Regeneration. Again, the beacon, or you want to include some redstone dust for a minute and 30 seconds of that. We also have Slowness here, which only goes up to four minutes with a piece of redstone dust. We have speed, which you can get from a beacon. Then we have strength. You can also get that from a beacon. And we have water breathing. And last of all, for the potions, we have weakness. Again, redstone dust, so you can have four minutes of it. Now, next up, we got absorption. You'll get two minutes of that from a regular golden apple and from a notch apple as well. This one, though, will also give you resistance, fire resistance, and regeneration. Now, there's a few things that you're going to have to do in a short amount of time. And you might want to go for that if you think you can juggle them all at once because it means you have to consume less of the other things beforehand. Now next up we got glowing which you get from a spectral arrow. So let's type that in here and you can see the recipe for the spectral arrow. What you have to do with this is basically just shoot yourself. And this is probably the last thing you're going to do because it only lasts for 10 seconds. Now the next one is kind of pointless. Hunger, you get it for 15 seconds from the puffer fish or 30 from rotted flesh. Thing is though, you're going to use the puffer fish anyway, so you might as well skip that step. And the very last one is nausea, which you get from the puffer fish for 15 seconds. 
And last of all is the status effect that you can't get through these means, and that is haste. You'll need a beacon for that, and it's the smallest type of beacon, so you only need nine blocks of iron, and then you can select haste. Now, the other thing you might want to get from here is resistance, which requires the next tier, so you'll need a slightly bigger beacon. However, you can also get resistance through the notch apple, so if you're using that, you won't need to bother with a bigger beacon setup. But with a total of 37 iron blocks, you can just put an additional three here. That one can be set to resistance, and this one here will actually use those iron blocks, and you can set that one to haste. With all of those considered, there are still three other status effects that we require to unlock this advancement. We have mining fatigue, levitation, and the wither effect. And you're thinking, we've got to put all three of these mobs in the same place at the same time, and the hardest one is probably going to be getting that shulker all the way back to the overworld. Well, I propose a way where we don't move the shulker, we don't move the Elder Guardian, and technically, you wouldn't have to move a Wither Skeleton if you were comfortable with spawning a Wither Boss, which I'm not. So the only thing you've got to do is move the Wither Skeleton to the end dimension. Of course, it's not just as simple as moving a wither skeleton, there's going to be a lot more prep work involved to get this advancement. And we start off over here at an ocean monument. This is where your own journey will actually start, because we're going to use the Never to travel to a stronghold. And luckily for me, there is a stronghold around a thousand blocks from here, which is relatively close to an ocean monument. And on your average world, it's probably going to be a little bit further away, but traveling through the Never is going to be very fast. So the idea is that we get from here to the end city as quickly as possible. So this is where the journey starts when you're doing this for real. You're gonna get the mining fatigue effect which will last for five minutes you're going to hop through into the never jump into a boat and you would have already prepared a tunnel like this that's going to take you to where the stronghold is so we have a nether portal hooked up at the stronghold as well that means we can make a very quick journey through to the end portal because i've put that portal right next to it so we hop through like this and then we've already figured out where we're going here i've left a marker we're going to fly over as quickly as we can to this end city gateway and then we're going to throw an ender pearl into it like that we get teleported to this part of the end and then we're going to fly over to the nearest end city which is about a hundred sorry 800 blocks away and i've already made this path which we can actually use to get the wither skeleton there as well but this acts like a guideway to let me know how to get to the end city so we've done it in creative mode we've seen that it's not too much hassle but now i want to do it in survival mode and find out exactly how long that would actually take to get to the nearest end city which of course is where the shulkers are going to be The next order of business is the Wither Skeleton and getting it all the way to one of those end city dungeons. Unless you fancy spawning a Wither Boss over there, which I'm going to guess you don't want to do. So, this is going to be a game of cat and mouse. We've got to lure this fella through portals and get him all the way over to that end dungeon. And in this game, you are going to be the mouse. You want to grab a Wither Skeleton's attention, get it to follow you, and lure it all the way there. Which is quite a tedious task and can be a little bit scary as well. Now location is important, you want to pick a nether fortress, which is where these wither skeletons spawn, one that is relatively close to the portal that takes you to the stronghold. Luckily for us, it's right next door. Now in this chest I prepared some materials to things that you should bring along with you. Make sure you've got a good set of armor for surviving the nether. Bring a fire resistance potion in case you encounter some lava. We have a speed potion here as well because you want to be faster than the wither skeleton or you could alternatively throw one of these on it and slow it down. Now if you have to punch the wither skeleton to get it to go into a portal or something like that then it's going to take damage and having a couple of instant damage potions to heal it would be a very good idea. Now make sure you've got plenty of good food so that you don't have to eat it too often. You can focus on playing the game and you'll also need to heal yourself from time to time because you're probably going to get hit by this guy. So a golden apple instant health potion regeneration potion all of that stuff the key here is preparation and two things that are really going to help you ender pearls to get out of a tricky situation and also blocks because they're very powerful you can place them you can block off the path of the wither skeleton make sure you have plenty and plenty of blocks on you 
Luring a wither skeleton is real simple, grab its attention, walk through the portal and it will follow you into the portal. Now when it comes to the end portal what you're going to have to do is just simply punch it in there which means it does take a little bit of damage. So the wither skeleton is now going to be on the platform in the end and when you go through it yes it is going to attack you straight away. So make sure your health is full and you've got a golden apple ready. But then you would have wanted to have prepared a pathway that will lead onto this main end island and over to where your portal is. And what I've prepared here is a contraption that's going to send the wither skeleton through this end portal which means we save a lot of time instead of building a big long platform. So you want to have some stairs to lure the wither skeleton up like this and then we've got this simple water channel which we're going to jump into and the idea is that the wither skeleton will follow us in here as well. When we drop down we can move to the side but the wither skeleton won't be able to and that's because it's two and a half blocks tall so it's going to be trapped right there unable to go anywhere. So with a couple of pistons lined up like this and a way to power them we can put a boat here and it picks up the wither skeleton. Now bear in mind it won't always do that so you might have to place the boat several times but then you want to power the back piston and then this one and the wither skeleton will take damage but then it will stop because it's actually going through the portal in that boat. Now when we go through the portal we're going to take damage straight away so your option here is actually to fly all the way over there if you wanted to. Um, so yes, let's go through the portal. You can see we're inside the wither skeleton and of course the next step is to break the boat But I found that it puts you on the edge of whatever platform you've got So you might want to extend this platform Otherwise the wither skeleton could drop down below and take additional damage So you break that you've got your wither skeleton here It's another game of cat and mouse and that's why I built this platform leading all the way to the end city now at the beginning of this video I did say you should watch this all the way through before you attempt this and that's because the order that I'm doing things isn't always the smartest and I actually thought of showing you this next step before bringing the wither skeleton over here but for some reason it didn't cross my mind until I saw them both sitting here that this could be a little bit problematic. So when you first arrive at your end city what you want to do is kill one of the shulkers and keep the other one alive and then build around it which is definitely going to be a bit of a pain but the reason that we're doing this is so that we can contain it inside of a room and then walk into that room when we want to get the levitation effect. So I've made that room and now this is separate from the wither skeleton because of course if you're doing this while you've got a wither skeleton here as well something is bound to go wrong. But with the wither skeleton and the boat like we've got we can just put this guy in a room as well and then we can walk up to him when we need the wither effect. Now one thing I would recommend doing is perhaps making all of these rooms two blocks tall just in case an enderman comes into the mix because of course they can fit into a free high room. So preparations have been made, I've double and triple checked and I don't think I've missed a single effect here. I've also done this probably the harder way by not having five or was it six beacons in total? I forget now but it's really not too much because I put all of my potions into these dispensers. So you should have a little something like this, your beacons, a chest of items and a way to take your potions which you could do while you're flying over here but I prefer this way. So what we got is a button powering a block with a redstone torch on it that's going to power both dispensers so we can walk into here and get four effects then we can go over here and get six and that's the first thing that I'm going to be doing is getting all my effects from the potions then I'm going to pick out these two items I'll probably eat the golden apple first then I'm going to walk up to this guy get withered eat the puffer fish and then we're going to look upwards and shoot ourselves with a spectral arrow. So you'll probably want a gap in the ceiling somewhere so you can look up, shoot yourself like that, get the glowing effect which only lasts for 10 seconds and then I'm going to walk forward and get the levitation effect. The reason I'm doing it before the levitation is because I thought it might be a pain if you're like flying around in here and your head is hitting the ceiling. So let's do this thing in survival now. I would say I'm nervous but I've done this several times and figured out a few things so our method here is going to tweak and change and we'll go over the details there after we've done this but right we've landed we need to pick up our golden apple and puffer fish then it's time for the first set of potion effects and the first thing we're going to consume by the way is now the golden apple okay second set then we walk through into here we're going to get the levitation effect while we eat this we've been levitated we've been shot with the glowing arrow now we need to eat the puffer fish to get the wither effect and we did it people we did it. Oh, look at me. Didn't I look fancy right there, eh? <laughs> that looks pretty creepy. So don't go anywhere just yet. You need to know the things that I changed in our strategy because I discovered a few problems along the way. The biggest one of all, though, that I couldn't figure out for a while 
was that I'd actually already unlocked this from earlier in the video. I simply forgot to revoke it and wasted quite a lot of my own time. But anyway, first tip I want to say is the outside of this city had lots of shulkers on it that would shoot at me on the way over here. Sometimes that was a little bit of a problem, so make sure you clear the end city and they won't cause you any harm. Now the next thing is the golden apple. The golden apple gives you four seconds of regeneration too. That is actually a huge problem because it overrides the regeneration that we get from over here. So what I would recommend doing is actually making a, a splash regeneration 2 one that lasts for 22 seconds that's what we used now our method at the end there changed a little bit we walked into here we ate the golden apple while we were getting shot with levitation then we used the dispenser to hit us with spectral arrow went round the corner consumed the puff of fish and then got withered but this guy has a name tag because I came over here and it had despawned so like I said at the beginning always a good idea to watch the video all the way through first when you do have a wither that you're luring remember to name tag it so that it doesn't despawn. The very last thing to mention is hunger. This thing down the bottom here, okay? First time I came over here, I couldn't actually eat the puffer fish because I had a full hunger bar. So make sure you got about three or four haunches of hunger and then you'll be able to eat it and everything will be just fine. And so that concludes this tutorial guide, whatever you want to call it. If you've enjoyed the video, leave a like. Thank you for the support as always. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and check out the tutorials playlist for more Minecraft knowledge for your noggin. Now, we're going to end up with this. Bam! <laughs> I love that sound. Very cool. Also, it gives you a thousand experience points as well. Maybe you should have mentioned that in the beginning of the video. But anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.